This conference will now also. be recorded. All right, great. So I'm just going to press the record button. So good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our next installment of our History in Our Backyard uh, lecture series, now converted to webinars during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Uh, my name is Eleanor Rangers, and I'm the president of the society. And uh, as usual, um, I do have a couple of introductory remarks before we introduce our guest speakers this evening. Um, and as always, we do thank you for your support. So as I mentioned, we've converted our lectures, which normally are live and held at the Fuge in Warminster, Pennsylvania. But uh, during this, uh, as they say, unprecedented time, uh, we have gone virtual. So we do appreciate you uh, dialing in. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone that uh, if you uh, would like to re- uh, you know, review uh, any of our uh, webinars, which have been um, ongoing since July of 2020. We do house them on our YouTube channel, um, so you can definitely uh, check them out there. And uh, as a reminder, um, if you are not receiving emails from us, you certainly can access uh, access us through Facebook. We have a social site there, um, and. Uh, also, you can always get on our email distribution list if you shoot me an email at mail at coldwarhistory.org. But if you're not getting um, emails and you already are on the email distribution list, check your junk folder, uh, junk email folder. Sometimes uh, our emails do end up in there. I try not to bombard you with a ton of emails, but uh, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Also wanted to uh, let you know, um, you know, in August, um, I actually presented uh, a presentation called The Space Race in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, uh, talking about uh, primarily the Johnsville Centrifuge and its role in the uh, space race uh, in training astronauts. I will be doing a reprise of that presentation actually for the Warminster Free Library next week. So if you have interest in re-listening to that, um, definitely uh, go to the Warminster Free Library website and look for their calendar. And on October 13th, there should be information uh, for that webinar. It will be a Zoom webinar uh, starting at 6.30 Eastern time. So I did want to just mention that and give a plug to the local library and uh, for inviting me to give this talk. Um, also, um, just to let everyone know, um, we have decided to still have our Veterans Tribute event. Um, obviously this year we need to do it virtually as well, but we will be having a Veterans Tribute on uh, Wednesday, November 11th from 7.30 to 9. Uh, we do have a program including a guest speaker and an an introductory speaker as well, um, and perhaps even uh, someone singing the Star Spangled Banner, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so please uh, tune in. I will be sending out more information about this event for next month. Um, and also, just added, as of last night, we have a December program added. Um, Chris Petty, who actually is the individual who designed the uh, commemorative uh, centrifuge logos that I've uh, advertised periodically. Um, Chris has been working diligently on this book, Beyond Blue Skies, the rocket plane programs that led to the space age. And um, his book is coming out in November. So I have been able to secure him for a discussion about the content of his book, which will include a discussion about the X-15. And as many of you know, who have tuned into our programs previously, some of the early X-15 pilots uh, trained um, at on the Johnson Centrifuge. So I'm very much looking forward to this. And I'm also pretty tickled because um, this book will actually have a contribution from our organization. We were able to provide a high resolution image of Neil Armstrong uh, during training at Johnsville that will appear in the book. So that's kind of exciting as well. But um, also note, this is a special time, 5 Eastern. Chris is in the UK, so um, he will be graciously indulging us with a late evening presentation. So uh, please put that on your calendars for December. 
And of course, you know, topics, uh, we always welcome topics. I want to thank the gentleman who sent me a uh, actually an idea today about Navy's radio intelligence operations that I'm going to try to book for 2021. But this is the list of my to-do list uh, to reconfirm um, these topics. And I've had previous conversations and tentative commitments. So uh, definitely looking forward to starting to book uh, webinars in 2021. I do anticipate that we probably will still be virtual uh, for uh, the majority, if not all, of next year. But uh, please stay tuned for, for the ongoing program announcements. And I do want to announce, I'm pretty excited, uh, you need to check out our new and improved and expanded website at coldwarhistory.org. Uh, just basically went live last night. Um, figured during the pandemic, this was an ideal time to finally make take some time and do it right and um, actually uh, make ourselves look really legitimate on the web. So uh, please uh, go and check that out. Uh, for those of you on the call this evening who are former alumni of the Naval Air Development Center, um, you will see that it is quite well represented on the site. So um, welcome any feedback that you'd like to uh, provide and uh, hope that you enjoy the content. It was kind of surprising that I guess after doing this for 10 years, we have amassed quite a number of, of things to uh, populate the website. Um, and as always, if you chose, if you choose to um, um, actually donate to our organization. We operate on a shoestring budget um, and basically, um, you know, events like this and to bring in other speakers and uh, pay for websites, those types of modest things are always, uh, we always welcome donations. And one easy way to do that uh, is with Amazon Smile. You can actually designate us as the uh, charitable organization of choice. Um, I also do have a donate button that has been added to our new website. So there are ways in which you can actually donate to the organization as well through our website. And again, as always, thank you for your continued support. So I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, our two speakers this evening um, who are going to talk about um, a documentary. Um, I will say as a brief preface, um, that we were hoping to be able to view the documentary this evening, but due to some technical difficulties with uh, the GoToWebinar format, um, being able to get audio from the video was really just, it was uh, technically not uh, feasible. So we do have a workaround for that. Um, and I'm actually going to let Gary and Chris speak to that in a moment about what we're going to propose to do with that. Um, but without further ado, let me introduce um, Gary and Chris. So um, Gary, um, Gary Cox is an independent film and media distributor um, residing in Wisconsin, and he manages Night at the Opera Media, and he produced the documentary that we're going to discuss this evening. He also um, produced The Battle of Cloyd's Mountain, another documentary, um, actually um, dealing with a Civil War battle. Um, and he's also produced many films and informational videos for the General Electric Company. Um, and he also produced a documentary regarding the creation of the famous Safe House Spy Bar in Milwaukee entitled Reflections of the Station Chief. And I think um, there are some slides in, in the presentation this evening that will actually show you um, that particular uh, venue. So we definitely welcome Gary. Um, and along for the uh, presentation this evening is Chris Sturdivant, who I believe that many of you have met previously. Chris uh, was with us last April for a presentation regarding um, his first book, Cold War Wisconsin, which discussed a number of interesting um, stories related to uh, the Cold War spe that specifically um, in Wisconsin. He has just um, had another book release, which we've mentioned a couple of times, Cold War Illinois. And I, I uh, wanted to make sure that he spoke to that a little bit this evening as well. Um, and uh, Chris is an Air Force veteran. Uh, he is also the head of the Miss Midwest chapter of the Cold War Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, and uh, he, as you can see here, he has uh, traveled the world in search of uh, sporting events as well as Cold War, uh, Cold War opportunities uh, in Afghanistan, Chernobyl. He's been to North Korea, all sorts of crazy places that I'm too chicken to go to. But um, another 
uh, Cold War aficionado, and we welcome him this evening. So, um, again, I'm going to allow Gary and Chris to speak to sort of the logistics regarding the documentary. Um, suffice it to say, we're going to make it available for a limited period of time, and we're going to be um, offering a discussion time next week at the same time, same webinar channel um, to basically debrief on that. So that is our, our workaround. Um, and we will provide a password, a passcode in order to access that video. But again, I'll let uh, Gary and Chris speak to that. So I think I'm gonna turn things over to both of them. I am gonna switch, uh, switch slide decks here uh, and then I, we can get going. All right, I'm going to turn things over to Chris. All right, well, thanks a lot. And, and I really appreciated coming out last last April. That was a wonderful opportunity to meet all of you and especially go to the Fuge, which again shows the remarkable amount of Cold War history that's local. And realizing the amount of astro number of astronauts that came through that, that particular location both inside and out, just uh, sitting in that, uh, I want to call it the Gravitron, but it's not the Gravitron, uh, this big spinning arm there, and then you got the big slingshot thing outside. It's, it's really incredible, and I think it speaks to the value of supporting local Cold War history and preserving local Cold War history, and I can certainly commend Eleanor and, and many of you for taking part in a lot of these programs, many of which a lot of you have lived through this era and experienced it firsthand in many ways. So the last year I did speak to Cold War Wisconsin, and uh, I did write a follow-up book, Cold War Illinois, which Werner is a big part of both, because Werner, to me, was a central figure locally here uh, in Chicago and Milwaukee, and had a kind of an interesting tie into my life, because um, probably about 20 years ago, I was introduced to Werner through a mutual friend, Francis Gary Powers Jr., and were, or Gary had uh, invited Gary to come to Wisconsin to do a talk presentation, and he suggested I get a hold of Werner. Well, little did I know that we had Werner and I had a common friend, another common friend named John Van Altena, and John was a seventh grade teacher of mine in Janesville, Wisconsin, who was rumored back then to have served some prison time in East Germany. And Werner was shocked because uh, he too, of course, had served prison time. He served six years in Stasi prisons, Hohenschenhausen prison in particular, and some other Stasi prisons uh, from 1954 to 1961. And at that time, they had not seen each other for close to 30 years. So it was a little bit of a twist of fate that Werner and I both got in touch with each other with the help of Gary Powers. And of course, that we had some mutual um, Prison, a mutual prison friend that meant a lot to me as well. So he, he did quite mean quite a bit and he is part of, of both books simply because of his connection here and his work in Wisconsin and of course being in, in Chicago and there's an entire espionage chapter dedicated to him, Robert Hansen um, and our friend uh, Raymond Benson who was the uh, one of the official James Bond authors. So that's just a little teaser for that aspect. Eleanor, do you need to do you need to move the slides forward and back or? She's gone. Yep, I'm here. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, let me okay. just make sure. Yeah, I don't know. Done. There we go. And I'll just, uh, again, I'm just going to talk real briefly. And um, Gary, I'm like Gary Cox in here. He's the filmmaker and certainly the driving force with this. Um, but again, those are just some of those topics. Uh, what you'd find in the Cold War Illinois book, and hopefully I can come out and talk a little bit more about that. Just some of the Cold War ties in, in Illinois were, were astounding. Ronald Reagan, Walt Disney, Ernest Hemingway, uh, Bobby Fischer, and of course the birth of the atomic bomb in the University of Chicago, which set off the first man-made human atomic uh, reaction um, back in the early 1940s. Didn't know it was gonna happen after that, but thankfully, uh, Thankfully, Chicago didn't uh, go under. They, they really thought there was going to be something wrong, something catastrophic could have happened uh, at the first reaction as part of the Manhattan Project. If you want to go ahead, I'll just briefly go through some of these slides that I had put together for, for Werner, just a little bit of, again, some in, insight to it. Um, Werner and I, uh, of course, through the Cold War Museum on the left there, Gary Powers had for many years done a number of embassy 
embassy receptions. Um, uh, this happens to be the Polish embassy and uh, with the Hungarian ambassador there back in, uh, I think it's dated there even like 2006, 2005, so it's been some time. Um, so Werner Winters was a very integral part of the Cold War Museum, being the European Affairs Director, um, and again, doing a lot here in, or locally in Wisconsin and, and, and Illinois. On the right, you see him and I at Felix Straczynski's desk at the International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. That is an actual desk, and there are some other furnishings in there that are a little creepy of the original um, KGB um, back in the 1920s. Go ahead and switch it forward. Werner, Werner's story actually predates the Cold War. He was involved with uh, the resistance as a Hitler youth during the latter stages of 1945. And he was uh, digging digging ditches as the Allied powers were coming in towards, uh, towards Berlin. Um, he then, uh, as we'll get, probably get to in a little bit more detail, uh, found his way through some prison camps, um, was uh, learned a machining trade in the late 1940s, uh, became a, in, embedded in the Communist Party in the state of Hesse, and he was one of the leaders there. So one of Werner's jokes for a long time was that not only was he a, a good American that, we, that I knew him as, but he was a good communist because he had to feign that during his infiltration in local, in local uh, communist affairs where he was from. But Berlin, of course, being the big symbol of the Cold War, East and West, um, you can still see some remnants of the Cold War right there in Berlin. You see some of the help during the Berlin Wall going up in 1961, and some even defectors you see in the lower right-hand corner uh, in Berlin. Next slide. Werner was also really wonderful because, in, in, in other ways, many ways, but uh, he was fluent in Russian. He was, a fluent, he was fluent in Polish, and he was uh, an airport ambassador at Chicago Harris Airport for many years. And he was able to kind of ferry around some of our VIPs, so to speak. And this happens to be Eugene Yelchin, who I invited um, a couple years ago. And he was a, a Newbery Award author of Breaking Stalin's Nose and other um, tales that involved Soviet children. Eugene actually came here from the Soviet Union when he was 27 years old in 1983. He was a stage actor, he was a theater producer, uh, came to the United States, found his way to Hollywood, where he went to punk rock bands and befriended the future director of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And so, Eugene, um, very, very talented individual, but Werner and him got to, got together real well. Um, and uh, he, he's been, he, he always bridged the gap, you know, between those those types of interactions that we could uh, relate here in Wisconsin and bring in our visitors in. Next slide. Werner was also a big part of promoting Cold War history in Wisconsin. You see the Nike missile site at Hillcrest Park in Waukesha. That is about 20 minutes west of Milwaukee. He and uh, Sergei Khrushchev uh, next to him in the middle, and then Francis Gary Powers had a nice, uh, nice event here uh, in Wisconsin. And um, again, one of those high high visibility events that connected people with the Cold War, people that remember the Khrushchev era. And this was, of course, Nikita Khrushchev's son, Sergei. Sergei was a big part of the Cold War Museum in Washington. Um, and Gary uh, Powers invited a number of the, kind of like the sons and daughters of the Cold War as part of the effort to preserve Cold War history. Uh, Sergei passed away, I just believe a couple of years, a couple of months ago. He came to the United, defected the United States in the mid nineties, uh, became a professor uh, at Brown University and um, uh, lent, his, lent his name to a number of Cold War causes and wrote a number of books, of course. But that site there in Waukesha, that is uh, under development as a, it's been a city park for a number of years. And finally, a lot of preservation efforts are going into that by the city of Waukesha that owns it as a park and developing that as a uh, memorial to the, not only the Nike veterans there, but to the Cold War and keeping it uh, with its initial purpose as a recreation area at the same time. Next slide. That's an actual cell door from a Stasi prison in Hohenschenhausen prison uh, in, in Berlin that is located at the safe house that um, 
Eleanor alluded to, and Mary Cox has has done a had done a a similar documentary with Dave Baldwin, who owned the safe house, founded it um, several years ago. But you can see that actual cell door that is a prison cell door. If you watch the Bridge of Spies movie with Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, in the movie Tom Hanks gets thrown into a prison cell that is the numbered. The actual next door would be the next door cell to that cell door you see there in that picture. So we have the kind of like the the neighbor, I guess the neighbor of that prison cell door, the prison cell that Tom Hanks served in um, in the movie Bridges Spies. Next slide. And then I'll let uh, let Gary Cox talk a, a little bit about the movie itself. So again, this is just to give you maybe an idea of what Warner was and. Um, and what he uh, represented for his Cold War history and what the struggles that he went through and why a documentary was made of him. So I'll get it over to Gary Cox. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, oh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, I know. We're sorry. We're getting some feedback. I've been looking to see if anyone, if every everybody is muted. The the only thing I can think of is maybe there is one dial in, and that individual might not be able to mute their line. Um, so I don't. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But we can hear you. You, you can hear me, okay? Yep. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. So so uh, again, thank you very much. Um, it was uh, it was in 2015 um, that um, I had come across Werner, and uh, he uh, expressed an interest in in making his story into a movie. I won't go into all those details, but basically, it comes back from 2015. The, the title has come from Werner. Th this was important for him uh, to be called this, um, um, and so. Um, uh, that's where we get the title from. Um, in Werner's world, uh, you can uh, you, basically uh, it's the NATO against the Warsaw Pact is his little world. Um, and so this movie concentrates on his adventures in East and West Germany. And we don't talk anything about the other aspects of the Cold War, Asia or anything like that. Uh, the movie is a docudrama. So you can see Werner there. Uh, he is describing his events um, and what we did uh, together, we brainstormed how to do, do this. And essentially, we reenacted uh, basically his whole life uh, around the Cold War um, and the black and the uh, the reenactments are in black and white. Uh, we shot all of this in um, eastern Wisconsin. So eastern Wisconsin became um, essentially East Germany um, with authentic uh, uniforms that we got um, 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 and uh, uh, local actors, things like this. So this sort of gives you sort of the image of how we're going to present the movie. Uh, next, uh, next slide, Eleanor. So um, as I mentioned, we really began um, intense interviews with Werner in 2016. I, I suppose there was around, I don't know, about 25 hours of video um, interviews with him to get all his story basically uh, stored. Um, and once that was complete, then the reenactments began to be shot. Um, and the, uh, the reenactments was divided up in, into two years uh, essentially, um, 2017 uh, was his uh, capture and prison uh, adventures, and then in 2018 we moved to the second unit, which was essentially um, uh, Warner's uh, youth, and also when Warner was released and he returned uh, after many many years uh, back to. Um, uh, Berlin um, in 1992. So that's just the sequence of how we shot this. Um, um, it was in 2017 uh, that Warner was beginning to fail in health. Um, he was having issues um, with his uh, kidney and, and things like this. So um, he was starting to get very sick. Um, 
And in mid-2018, uh, we were actually done with the movie. And so he was able to see the movie a couple times. He and his wife, Rita, um, gave some creative feedback. But essentially, they loved it. And so I'm, I'm very pleased that we, we worked really hard on getting this complete before Warner passed. But he did pass um, in October of uh, 2018. Uh, <clears throat> we spent the rest of the um, the year preparing for release on DVD. So you can go to the next slide, Eleanor, please. So we're not going to go through this, and I, I'm I'm not uh, I don't like busy PowerPoint slides. But essentially, this is from the DVD insert to sort of give um, people the sort of the um, hit you over the head the fact that it's a very very complicated period as you guys know who, who lived through it. it it really began right at the end of world war uh two um one would argue um where exactly would you say the cold war started so werner has decided for himself when it started and it's in the movie you'll have to see the movie if you want to uh, uh see what he what events he thinks really uh, started the Cold War. Um, but you can see here that it's essentially a 50-year war. <laughs> and and this is by no means an exhausted list, but it's a high-level summary of, of everything um, that uh, is pretty significant. And collectively, historians and, and politicians can more or less believe that it was over in 1992. Um, after the uh, collapse of the USSR uh, that came after the uh, the Berlin Wall uh, coming down in 91. So, so but, but, but there are many people who say that it's, we, it never ended and that we're still in it. Some people would say that we actually have Cold War II going on. So you have World War I, World War II. So one might say you had Cold War I and Cold War II. Um, so in any case, for the purposes of this movie, um, we complete uh, up to 1992 and, and leave it at that. And that year is significant because that's the year uh, Warner goes back to Berlin. So next slide, uh, Eleanor. I hope, I'm, I hope I'm coming across okay on the audio. I just got rid of the Cold War stuff there. We're just gonna say uh, here about the actual uh, movie um, on Warner it starts in 46. At, he's a kid, essentially. Um, and um, uh, he and his family or have uh, most of them were able to escape into West Germany in, in uh, 46. Um, it is in uh, it's in the late 40s and in early 50s that Warner um, is actually working um, for organization Galen. Uh, which is a creation of the CIA. Um, and uh, as Chris uh, had um, mentioned earlier, he had infiltrated the Soviet underground in West Germany. Um, <clears throat> so this is a very important aspect to Werner Spine. I mean, Werner Spine is divided up between the East uh, and the West. And so the movie has this sort of um, two-part uh, um, um, presentation in that uh, the first part of the movie we were concentrating on his spying in the Soviet underground in West Germany um, um, and then um, he uh, goes from working for the CIA to now going to the US military intelligence under G2 which are all being controlled by NATO at this time uh, in 53 and 55. And this espionage activity is in East Germany. It is in East Germany, then, is where Werner is captured by the Stasi um, and uh, is, uh, spends uh, time in, in many different prisons. Um, but basically, he uh, survives up until 1961 and then is released right believe it or not right at the time that the berlin wall goes up werner is released 
uh, within days uh, from prison and makes his way back to uh, West Germany. Um, so the movie has reenactments of these events that are pretty important that's happening both in his espionage activity but his prison uh, life. Um, and there are uh, uh, a number of cellmates that uh, have their own um, very interesting Cold War activities to describe. And so we have some reenactments of some of the, his, uh, his cellmates as well uh, in the movie. Um, it, is, um, it is with the passage of time that uh, the Berlin Wall falls and uh, Germany is reunited, uh, East and West are reunited into uh, uh, one country and the same is true as Berlin. Berlin becomes uh, a universal city with uh, uh, the, uh, break, the ending of the Berlin Wall. So, so Werner goes back to uh, his cell, his exact cell, um, in um, in prison, and uh, this is a, I'm not going to give the ending away, but that's that's the time that the movie is over here. Uh, next page, Eleanor. Thank you. Uh, this is again from the this is from the DVD uh, insert. This is just uh, this these are the chapters of the movie. This just gives you the feeling of the complexity here uh, of what we're trying to describe. These things that are very important to uh, to Werner. And this sort of plays on the dual aspect of Werner's life, part one being the West and part two being the East um, and the prison sort of in the middle. This is actually Werner's, uh, this is actually Werner in 1961, this picture here uh, and, uh, of his release papers. So um, uh, he's, um, he's given a coat and tie and, uh, and photographed. And, and and these are on his release papers, and we were lucky to have that picture of Werner. Um, so that's uh, that's it. You can go to the next um, slide, Eleanor. So um, we have. Um, there's so many people who, who, who don't know much about the Cold War in history. And um, uh, basically, we, we tried to make it more digestible to have a, a theater version of 90 minutes. Um, and uh, that's the movie that we're going to allow you guys to see free. Basically, we'll just go on to a link. It's under a platform called Vimeo. It's, um, it's a step up from YouTube. Um, it should play much easier than YouTube, but it works like YouTube. You would give a link. It'll ask you for a password. Uh, the password is lowercase Werner, but we'll put all this into an email as, as well as the link. Uh, for a souvenir, if you, if you want the full version, um, which has all of his tales and adventures, um, this is what is actually on the DVD itself with the screen plain notes and production photos and these inserts that we've been looking at tonight. And, um, and this is available for $10 on, on the website, Night at the Opera Media, if you want you on DVD. Uh, for the purposes of next week's sort of Q&A and you know, wrap up of the movie for those who want to see it, um, uh, there's probably time if you order real quick, you can have the DVD version. Otherwise, you can just look at the 90-minute theater version that we're going to make available. It's it's up to you. You might you might decide uh, after the 90-minute uh, review, you might decide that you want your own DVD um, souvenir of it, or or whatever. Or, or you may you may not. Uh, there's no pressure or anything on the DVD. I'm just just making it available at a pretty low cost uh, for the people here. Um, there's also um, $3 of postage, um, I forgot to mention, but the DVD itself is, is 10 bucks. 
Um, and so, um, but thank you very much for your time. That's all I really wanted to talk about the, the, the movie, unless there's uh, other questions that you might have about, about how the movie was presented. But it was, it was a real pleasure getting to know Werner. He's, he's quite a man. Um, uh, he, he, he was a little saddened toward the end of making this movie that we were slipping back into a Cold War. And there was uh, uh, so much um, political um, um, leftist thinking that uh, it depressed him a little bit that we were going backwards in time. But in any case, I think he was uh, he was very proud that we got this done in time. He was very instrumental in in explaining this, and um, it's um, it's 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 a real gutsy um, historical picture that he painted here and um most people are thinking and saying that they need to see it actually a couple times to get it you know to to sort of get the flow of of, of all these several pieces that are coming at him from different directions of uh, in warner's world of the cold war so so that that's my wrap up and um and Chris and I can take questions if you want, or Eleanor, however you want to uh, to uh, to end this. But but um, we will send an email with the link and the password to everyone here, and uh, that's how you can free feel free to see the movie. So with that, I'll I'll shut up. Okay, I'm gonna go off the screen just so we can get to. Um... Oh, well, that's strange. I don't know why. I, oh, it's because I have everybody hidden. There we go. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, unmute and uh, and ask. And I don't know, Gary and Chris, I know one one of the uh, participants said, we can't see you. So I don't know if you if you are on, you have a camera that you can go on camera so everyone can, can see you as well. If not, no, no worries. Yeah, mine is not showing up on on this side. I'm not sure if I'm projecting out. Um, so I, I think it's the the sometimes the like you mentioned, you know, at the beginning, the the for the platform is can be um, kind of clunky, clunkier than Zoom or something. But I don't know if that's that factors into it. But I yeah, enabled my, I enabled my camera, but I don't know if you can see me. And likewise, yeah, no, it's just a black screen. Yeah, mm. that's really strange. I don't know why. Can't can't see you, but we can hear you. So okay, so that should be a problem. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, we just when we wanted to give you a little bit of overview. Um, sometimes it's it, obviously when you watch a movie, and then you can have some questions and maybe some thoughts kind of percolate in your mind after watching something. That's the usual format. Um, but at least we can give you an introduction here and give you an idea of what it's about. And a lot of you will, will take away, I'm sure, living in in that era. Um, understanding some of the events that Warner is collecting during his prison time, you will you will certainly know a lot of those, um, which is another another wonderful part of the movie that I thought Gary Cox did a very wonderful job of presenting. So you will be um, brought into the story, and 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 it, historically speaking, and some people may have lived through some of the the tales that Warner Warner tells. So I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it in a lot of in, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And actually, we think it'll probably work better, you know, rather than kind of having a static, you know, viewing on the webinar to give you at your free time to be able to review it. And then kind of like a book club, you know, we can come back next week at the same time to have a, you know, to have a discussion and to answer questions about that. But I do have a question for Chris and Gary. Um, I'm curious about what the reaction has been. Um, you know, from others that have viewed this so far, because it has been out for a little over a year. And um, so I'm curious about that, particularly from anyone who sort of, you know, lived lived through that or time frame and maybe of impact have had some analogous experiences. I'd be curious if you could share some of that with the group. Gary, if you, if you want to begin, um, go ahead. Um, there's been a, um, a lot. Can, can you can you see me or hear me? We I can, can hear, hear you. you. Go ahead. I I see myself on the web. I had to go to <laughs> settings and I have the camera in, enabled. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> uh, no, guess not. 
No. Speak to, the, speak to the question. There's we no can problem. hear you. No problem. In any case, in any case, uh, I did. I I got halfway through it. I could see myself speaking. Anyway, um, so um, a number of people have seen it. Um, don't know anything about the Cold War. Um, some people um, have, have said that uh, they thought it was something that happened in Siberia. They, you know, is that, that that's why it was cold. You know. So, um, so um, you come into this uh, with how can you present a, such a complicated uh, subject about Warner specific activity in the Cold War when the audience themselves don't even know what it is. So we spend about um, 15 minutes uh, of the movie explaining how we got into the mess to begin with. Uh, and so there's some good introductory material uh, that explains the Cold War before we even get to Warner. So that was a necessary job that we got, that we had to do from some early feedback about the fact that uh, you just can't start talking about Warsaw Pact unless people know that there was uh, uh, this big uh, dire threat uh, that uh, if you had to characterize the Cold War in, from a European perspective, um, and why Warner was involved. It was about this potential um, invasion of the Soviets into West Germany. I mean, that's why we have the Iron Curtain. Uh, that's why we have the Berlin Wall. It was this this threat of an invasion. And uh, everyone was gearing up for an invasion uh, that never came. And so, uh, but that's uh, that's some of the, uh, that was some of the feedback we got is that we needed to explain more of how we got into the Cold War. Uh, the rest of the feedback has just been sort of like uh, didn't know that um, that the Russians were so nasty uh, into East Germany. I mean, uh, they basically ran East Germany, um, even though they were a puppet to Russia. Um, it was um, it was essentially um, a surprise that there was so much involvement in, in East Germany with Russia. Um, and they also did not, uh, some people did not know at all that, um, um, that uh, uh, West Germany was so controlled by the CIA. <laughs> um, you know, the birth of Western, the best, the, the birth of West German intelligence is a creation of the CIA. And they would have never, didn't know that. So, so the, uh, it's a surprise again. So the movie is surprising. To people who don't, uh, who haven't, uh, who haven't been taught this in school, um, you know, that's an, that's enough. Well, you know, a, a couple couple comments. You know, one you mentioned that some people, when they thought Cold War, they thought it was something a tale of Siberia. And what's interesting about that is when we were developing our logo for our organization, we actually um, did that through a um, homeschooling. Uh, group uh they're like art school and um actually several of the about half of the submissions that the kids sent back um with a logo idea were like melting ice cubes and like a play off of melting snow or ice so um it, it's interesting that people that you actually had heard that as well um and and again kind of is one of the reasons why we started this organization as well to try to um you know, provide that history to people that may not be aware of it. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to uh, to mention that. Any other yeah, questions? We had a, we had a very um, just a wonderful reception from the from the um, Mount Prospect and Des Plaines uh, Rotary groups in December, which was one of our first movies that we did in a public format. Um, we had a few other ones scheduled, but they. You know, the events were canceled, like the EAA or Air Venture in Oshkosh, and uh, some other local venues that expressed interest. But nonetheless, uh, to them, it, since Warner and I were longtime members of the of the Rotary, just uh, it was just lovely to see him. I think that was the response that a lot of people who knew Werner loved seeing him on the screen and uh, just always felt his warmth as a human being um, in more ways than just his historical significance that he embodied. Um, just as the guy next door. Um, so that that is the biggest takeaway I've taken, get, getting from, as far as feedback from people who have seen the movie. Hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention for the group that um, 
that Gary had mentioned about how West Berlin was and, and you know, intelligence was, you know, a, a CIA construct. Um, I do have some links that I've added to the new and improved website um, based off of an interview we had done many years ago. Um, and we had this gentleman as a guest speaker many years ago. Um, he was with um, with the CIA and, and NSA, and he was actually based in West Germany, uh, listening into telephone transmissions from the East German uh, consulate. And they were based at this uh, place called Devil's Hill or Teufelsburg. And I do have some information about that particular uh, site and what was what was actually going on there, if anyone's interested in checking that out. And actually uh, getting another speaker to to actually join us to talk about that, I would I would love to be able to get that. But I haven't had uh, I need to uh, do some research to try to uncover some of that. But I did want to give a give a plug to some extra information if you're interested. Any other any other questions? All right, I'm going to take that as a no. And um, so what we're going to do is um, uh, we will I will make sure to send out the information with the passcode um, and the link to the Vimeo um, documentary this evening. Um, I will also um, post it to my social site. Um, it will be available again for free viewing for five days from from this evening. Um, and then our plan is to reconvene um, next Thursday, uh, the 15th of October. I'll send an announcement out for that and a link next Thursday. And uh, we can have a, a little debrief and talk about um, everyone's impression about the film and, um, and any questions for Gary and Chris. So hopefully that sounds like a plan for everybody. Yeah, thanks. I, right. I really appreciate the yeah the introduction, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll see everybody back next week. All right, very good. All right, well we're going to end a little early this evening, but that's okay because it may give you time to go listen to the documentary. So anyway, thanks again, everyone, and uh, we will hopefully uh, see you virtually uh, next Thursday evening, October fifteenth. All right, so take care, everyone.